Hello everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about a piece of Porsche history which is relatively unknown and very misunderstood, the 914. The 914 was Porsche's third new model since the company's inception and in 1969 when the car came out, let alone two years earlier when the first prototypes hit the road, it was nothing if not groundbreaking and viewed through the eyes of people today in 2020, it was in styling terms way ahead of its time. The 914 was, as most people know, a mid-engine model and it was Porsche's first mid-engine production model significantly. As we all know, Porsche had used the mid-engine layout mainly for racing cars since the early 50s. So they knew a thing or two about putting the engine immediately behind the occupants in the car and laying out the transmission behind it. Albeit interesting that the car was engineered as a mid-engine layout, what is probably more interesting and even more controversial is the car's styling. Most people will describe the 914 as a square or boxy or angular car, but when you examine it closely, you can see that there's not a straight line to be found anywhere in the car. And even more interesting is that when perceived from the back and the front, the width and smoothness of the horizontal panels and the fact that Porsche put the shut lines at the extent accentuate the fact that a 914 is one and a half inches wider than a contemporary 911 and four inches lower. That combined with the fact that the depth of engineering in the 914 shell ensured that its rigidity was going to be of an extremely high standard to allow for every model to have a Targa style removable top and still retain all the characteristics that were necessary to qualify the 914 as a proper sports car. The sketches for the Fiat Center, as it's known in Germany, were as old as 1964, so predated the car's production by about five years. Now the interesting thing is that from the sketches, members of the Porsche design team then went on to build their own one-fifth scale models that would be presented to a committee and voted on. And unanimously, Mr. Heinrich Klee was nominated with his bid for the design that would effectively become the production 914. Interestingly, Heinrich was not so much a car designer as he was a contributor to the team as a whole. He worked on elements of design for Porsche like the roll hoop for the Targa and the classical Fuchs wheel that we know today as part of Porsche folklore. Engineering the car as a mid-engine concept gave Porsche the opportunity to build it as a dedicated sports car. But packaging the car with the engine in the middle, just behind the occupants, gave the opportunity to have a lot of load carrying ability. A boot in the front and a compartment in the rear which could be used for luggage and to stow the removable target top. The 914 was conceived to be effectively two models for two companies, a four-cylinder car for Volkswagen and a six-cylinder car for Porsche. And depending on which country the car was being marketed in, they had different names. This particular car can be identified from the outside by its five lug wheels with distinctive Porsche Fuchs forged alloys as one of the rare six-cylinder models. The installation of the engine is exactly contrary to that of a 911, with the transaxle pointing out the back and the engine pointing forward. In fact, from this angle, anybody who owns an early 911 will be familiar with what they're looking at, but from an angle that they would never ever see it in their own car. The distinctive engine fan, which is what you're greeted by when you open the lid of a 911, is there, but it's pointing towards the firewall where nobody can see it. Sitting in the cabin of the 914, the first thing that strikes you is the feeling of being very low and sitting in a very wide car. As I mentioned before, it's an inch and a half wider than a contemporary 911 and you feel that when you're sitting here and you feel low and that's accentuated by the fact that the 914 has very, very deep wide sills, a massive element in what gives the car its strength and its torsional rigidity, something very, very important to the way that the car handles and drives. The sensation of the car being wide is accentuated by the car's very straight line dash. Board. The architecture of the interior of a 914 is very, very different to the 911s of the time. And the details, like the great swathes of basket weave vinyl and the switch gear and pieces of detail that are lifted from various Volkswagen and Porsche models of the time, give you a familiarity but set you up in a place which is very, very different to any of the models of the time. It was crucial for Porsche that this car be priced lower than the entry level 911, the T. 
but it was important that it was done in a way that didn't compromise the car's quality. So when you get in the cabin of the 914, you immediately start to notice little details that set it apart, not just from other brands, but from other Porsche and Volkswagen models. Firstly, the driver's seat very pleasantly tilts on its axis. It moves back and forth as you'd expect it to, but the passenger seat is absolutely fixed with no adjustment whatsoever. The door bins on the driver's side, unlike a 911, is a very large, generous door bin, but on the passenger side, there's no door bin at all. And it is these little details that set this car apart. It's the quirks that make the 914 so different, but so endearing to people that are enthusiastic about it. A significant part of what contributes to the 914's mystique, particularly here in Australia, is the fact that it is the only model that we never had officially imported. The factory didn't see fit to create right-hand drive examples of the car. And in markets like England, independent firms like Crayford actually did convert a number of cars that were sold to private clients. For us here in Australia, we nearly got the car and plans were afoot to import cars. Magazine articles were written that teased the car's arrival, pricing was prepared and two evaluator vehicles arrived in Australia. One which was converted before it got here, the other was converted at Hamilton's old premises at Noble Park. One car was even presented on the 1971 Australian Motor Show stand at the exhibition buildings, but sadly the cost involved in converting and preparing the cars as well as importing them encroached too much on 911T pricing, so the 914 in Australia never was. We can't have a conversation about a Porsche sports car without having a conversation about motorsport. We have to remember that at Le Mans in 1970, Porsche won the GT category with the 914 6 GT, as well as placing fourth in the index of efficiency, and later that year in the Marathon de la Route, a 1-2-3 finish. The 914.6 may not have been Porsche's most successful racing car based on a production model, but it certainly wasn't insignificant.